You know, I enjoyed not talking about dealers for a little bit. I really did. But then, you know, we get the regular old scumbag dealers getting back to scumbag activities like David Stanley, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Midwest City, Oklahoma. And in this case, I mean, roll the intro. I mean, this is really simple. Um, if you continue to treat customers bad, you're going to lose money, right? If you continue to do underhanded, dirty tactics, there could be consequences. Well, well, there's some new people uh, in charge of some of these dealerships at Stellantis. And, uh, well, let's just say David Stanley could be in a little bit of trouble. And we're going to talk about what those reasons are. So the negative reviews are back again for David Stanley. And these are all new. And what I find extremely interesting is it shouldn't be this hard to do good business. And I laugh because... David Stanley Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram may not be a Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealership much longer. I got a, I had a wonderful conversation with somebody at Stellantis about other videos and other stories that we talked about here, which I'll have update videos on that for you guys in the future. And two dealership groups came up and one of them was David Stanley. And, um, they asked what my honest opinion was of this dealership. And I said, well, have you read the reviews? As a Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram dealer, these guys buy reviews like crazy. And it's you, it's so blatant, you can see it. They've never done a review before. They're all one reviews. Or they're reviews that have reviewed multiple car lots in the area. And they all have five stars. Like, it's it's not hard to see. But then we have authentic reviews, like this one from Will Baker Miller, who's a local guide. And um, I'm just going to read this to you here. This is really simple. He says, if you like being lied to and disrespected, then I highly recommend this dealer. This is long. You should definitely read it if you plan to buy a car at David Stanley. I'll preface... What do you say? Uh, I'll preface this with during these events, I never raised my voice. I didn't curse anyone out except for the one guy on the phone that said I could go. F <laughs> oh, wow. And he told him he could go F himself. Tess drove a car on Wednesday, May 1st. That's how recent this is. In the evening, decided to buy it. Using my own bank. Oh my God, look at this. This guy's smart. He's using his own financing. Not allowing David Stanley to F him over, right? Um, I use my own bank. The salesman, Jean Marc, J-E-A-N-M-A-R-C, got the info together for me to take to my bank the next morning. I offered to put a deposit on the car so they knew I was serious about the purchase they declined. Yeah, they do that on purpose, and then they'll intentionally try to push to sell that vehicle um, to try to make you use their finance. It's just pain. It's just stupid. Jean-Marc and I shook hands. I told him I would call the next morning when I had the cashier's check in hand. When I called the next morning, he was with another client. Shocker. I asked the guy to let him know I had a check and would be out to pick up the car when I got off work. At that time, when you called them to tell them that you were coming to pick up the car, one of the porters parked that thing in the back, most likely. 
Called when I was on my way, asked for Jean-Marc. I was told he wasn't there. It was his day off. Hmm. He was on the phone with a customer that morning. Okay. <laughs> the salesman offered to help. I told him the car and that I was coming to get it. He didn't miss a beat and said, I think that one is sold. It's not sold. It's parked in the back of the dealership. The dealership had taken it to the auction that morning. He said if it didn't sell, he would call me on Friday to let me know. Told him no thanks, wouldn't do business with them, and would go to another dealer. The car showed as available on their website when I looked Friday morning, figured it sold. I had put an alert on it, and much to my surprise, it was back on the site and marked down 2000 What the hell? Can you, do, do you under, just reading this review, do you understand the incompetence at David Stanley Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram? Like, if I was the owner of this group, and I, I just, I don't know, what I, I'd probably clean house. I'd fire the GM, I'd fire the finance guy. Your, the, the, your staff is literally costing you money, and the money they make you by screwing over customers, which damages your brand, actually costs you more money in the long run. But anyways, I digress. He continues with his review. I really wanted the car, and now it was $2,000 cheaper. I called and spoke to a salesman named Arnold. They got names in here. I love this. I told him my information. He pulled me up in the system. He said, let me make sure it's here. You've had enough problems. He said it was definitely on a lot, and he was putting it in the computer. I was coming out. It was great to, It was great talking to Arnold, who told me his mama was the first female car salesman in Oklahoma, and she taught him to treat people right because his name was attached to how he treated people. I was impressed with his story. Thought, man, this is a good guy. Got there 30 minutes later. Arnold texted asking for a status. I texted him. I was in the lobby. He never made an appearance. <laughs> wow. The snake oil sales manager, Israel, well, hello, Israel, slithered out of his office to let me know the car wasn't there. He believed it might still be at the auction and sold. Again, more BS. It's literally just because you're a customer that they can't screw. You already have your own financing. You already have your, there's no way for them to get over on you. So this is why they, this is the scumbag activity that happens at David Stanley Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Midwest city, Oklahoma. I, I need to just keep saying that. Um, when I asked why it was back on their website, his response was, oh, I don't know those IT guys. He threw Arnold under the bus as well and said he most likely looked at their database, which isn't always right. I guess the IT department does as well. It's 2024. The database isn't the problem. It's the bad management utilizing it. That's right. Israel should be fired. The original sales guy that did the deal and shook the hand with this customer should also be fired. It's bad business. It looks bad for your brand. It looks bad for your dealership. And it just puts you in the cliche tropes of uh, scumbag dealers. And that's exactly what David Stanley Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is. Now, he continues with his review. Now, I know he's lying. He knows he's lying. Jean-Marc, who made an appearance, knew he was lying. Big man Israel going to save the day, smooth talk this old dumb buyer, so he gave me his card. He said to call him because he would get the keys of the car I was interested in, and no one would get them out of his hands. He said, and I quote, we don't want this to happen to you a third time. <laughs> the fact that it happened twice is enough, but a third time. Seriously, Israel, it shouldn't have happened the first time, and that's a fact. Everyone knows the sales managers and GMs run the show. The salesmen don't make random decisions to do the BS that occurred. That is a fact. The, the decisions that were made here were made by the general manager and the sales manager. And if the GM wants to say it wasn't him, then you need to fire your sales manager. Real simple. I can't make any sense of it. You have a guy that wants to buy the car. 
offers to put in a deposit, comes back the next day with a cashier's check, and instead, you take the car to auction, figure you can make a few extra bucks. It doesn't sell. You lower it another $2,000. Guy comes back to buy it, and it disappeared. They had the car already on the lot for 60 days. These folks at David Stanley are the car salesmen that all the stereotype is about. They are liars, underhanded, and couldn't care less about customers. Maybe one of you more intelligent customers can figure it out. Damn. Now, I know this is a little bit of a long video, but I really wanted to read that review. Because you know the reviews that damage your company the most on Google? Local guides. And that's a local guy who wrote a book and explained his entire experience and didn't just say sales guy. He named you SOBs at David Stanley. <laughs> And that makes my day. To the general manager, you know, I've had, I don't know if they're even still the same general manager, but I've had a general manager there text me a couple times trying to get me to sort out shit. And they've literally screwed over active duty airmen and uh, retired disabled veterans. So for me, I really don't want to have any correspondence or talk to you guys. Um, I don't feel anything's going to change at your scumbag dealership until literally... The management team is fired there. I'm sorry. It's just, and I know people are like, TK, it's messed up. You, you could be taking away somebody's job. I, I, I don't care. When you do this kind of scumbag behavior, um, you deserve it. Now I get the dealer. The dealer can sell the car for whatever price you, whatever price they want. If you didn't want to deal deal with the customer, the first day you shouldn't have shook on it. As a general manager, you should have came out and said, Hey, look, man. We appreciate your offer. We appreciate you working with us or wanting to buy a car from us, but we just don't we, we just don't like to we like to use our own financing in house. That's how we make our money. Like just be honest. Don't be with this Mickey Mouse scumbag activity. I don't know, that's just me. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Make sure to give the video a big thumbs up if you like what I do. And if you know a scumbag dealer. Put them in the comment section down below. Name them, city, state, and you can send me an email anytime about your experience with a bad dealer at TK's Garage Dealer Issues at gmail.com. That's TKS Garage Dealer Issues, all one word, at gmail.com. And um, I'll do my best to get to it and uh, cracking heads. Because unfortunately, like, until these dealers get these YouTube videos out and it starts hurting them when people start searching for the dealer and then these videos pop up first, that's the only time that these dealers actually make the necessary moves to be uh, to do things the right way. And as a dealer myself, I think it's just scumbag activity. But anyways, catch you guys on the next video.